Hello, I'm Jean Shafiroff. Welcome to Successful Philanthropy. This show is designed to showcase the leaders of philanthropy here on the eastern end of Long Island and then beyond. Today with us is Julie Ratner, and she is the founder and the president of the Ellen Hermanson Foundation. Julie, welcome and thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me and hello. It's good to see you, it's been a long time. Yes, Julie, and uh, Julie, uh, tell me a little bit, your, your charity deals with uh, breast cancer and breast cancer survivors. Before I hear more about your charity, what is the situation with breast cancer in the United States? Why are the numbers so high? And then why are the numbers so high on Long Island? This is, this is almost like a pandemic. You know, it is terrible. And I just want to acknowledge the pandemic because at our foundation, what we've been saying is even during coronavirus and COVID-19, the pandemic, breast cancer does not take a break and neither will we. And it, breast cancer is like a pandemic. Women are still being diagnosed. It is still, um, the it numbers are still on. terribly high. I think around 247,000 women will be diagnosed this year. The death rate is still way too high. And the frustrating thing about all this is there's still no answers. Why, why do we have the disease? Is it environmental? What in, our environment, what in the environment contributes to this And disease? maybe something we eat. I've always heard that um, chlorine in the water could be one of the reasons why there is so much breast cancer, but none of this is documented. This is all theory, and um, we just don't know at this time. And um, Julie, there so are suggestions. There yeah, are suggestions. A, that our diet can contribute. Exercise. You know, it's, it's a, we hear the same things, whether it's heart disease, diabetes, cancer. If you eat a healthy diet, you don't a drink an excess, right? low-fat diet, exercise, you have a better chance of staying healthy. Here on Long Island, I don't know what you do. We drink bottled water. We don't drink the tap water. My daughter's with me now because of the pandemic, and we buy our food from an organic store. We buy organic fruits and vegetables and hope that this will keep us on a healthy path. Right. I wish I could be more specific about the, about the answers, you know, uh, what the answers are to why we have such high rates of breast right. cancer. Right, and then I've heard uh, chemicals in the food and um, we just don't know, but I think if you, you know, try to eat a low-fat diet and women um, who drink a lot of alcohol, that's not a good thing either. They that. say that increases your risks of getting breast cancer. And then, and then try to reduce the chemicals in your diet. But not everybody can afford uh, bottled water, especially now with the pandemic and with so many Americans out of work right now. And so... Um, I hear in New York City, tap water is some of the best uh, tap water in the, in the country, country. And, and the water out here, well, it's, it's pretty good. So, um, Julie, but um, so now um, you founded um, the Ellen Hermanson Foundation many years ago, and can you give us a little history sure. why you why you founded this mm -hmm. organization and why it means so much to you to do the work that you're doing? To, a little history. Um, and, and just to go back to the foundation, I named it for my sister Ellen, who was my younger sister by almost six years. And why did you name it after Ellen? What was Ellen's she, situation? Ellen was diagnosed in 1989 when she was, had just turned 36 and she had a six month old baby. And she was diagnosed with stage four metastatic breast cancer. Oh, how sad. And she struggled mm. for six years and then she passed away. Heartbreaking. It was Just terrible. It was absolutely terrible. It was. It was the furthest thing from our minds as a family that is that she would get sick. I mean, when she was diagnosed, I thought, who gets sick with breast cancer with a tiny baby? And my how old was she when she passed away? She was 42, and my niece so was young. six years old. Oh, so tragic. And historically, Ellen was my younger sister by, as I said, by almost six years. She was my mascot. She, she and I were always extraordinarily close as, as siblings. And as we grew older, we, we remained close. And she really was a best friend to me. And um, she was a writer by training. She was a Middle East expert. She loved the Middle East. We would talk for hours about everything. And um, especially when she was ill, 
uh, we spent hours together and we had code. She would call me sometimes around dinner time. So and you had a real bond with your sister. Very, very and, close And did you bond. do this in honor of her? I did this in honor of Lovely. her, yes. I, I was mm -hmm. getting probably too in the weeds of detail. Yes, I did this in honor of her because she used her disease um, to become an advocate for other women with breast cancer. And as her disease became more debilitating and more entrenched, she became a harder worker in a way. She was one of the founders of the Jewish Healing Center. She was the first executive director of Judges and Lawyers Breast Cancer Alert. She was the editor of, of, a, of, a, of a, period, a little magazine called The Outstretched Arm. She was part of the Coalition for Cancer Survivorship. She gave a very important keynote speech about pain management along with Sandra Day O'Connor. So, so she was a really working uh, philanthropist, so to speak. A, she was. A woman who um, took her, um, the situation she was in, a woman who had a breast cancer and who did everything possible to try to help society and help other women who have this problem and then work with other causes too. And Julie, I consider you a great philanthropist oh, because uh, Julie Ratner has uh, actually started this charity, the Ellen Hermanson Foundation, in honor of her sister um, who at 42 passed away with breast cancer. And so, um, and I know, you know, breast cancer, it, it affects almost every single family. My family, both my grandmother and my mother had breast cancer. Really? Um, neither died of breast cancer. My mother uh, died at 86 of another type of cancer, but um, th this was a heartbreaking thing for, the, for my family to see my mother and then my grandmother. And um, so, of course, that makes me very concerned. So I go for my, I try to go for my yearly mammogram appointments and a sonogram appointments and I really I try to watch my diet low fat diet and I'm very careful because I have a, my family has a history of breast cancer and you have daughters and I have daughters I have two daughters so I, I don't want anything to happen to them I don't I want them to be careful sure. as well so getting back to the Ellen Hermanson Foundation Julie um, tell me you have an annual a fundraiser. Right. I've been involved for many years as thank a chair. You. Yes. And this year, you. your fundraiser is on July 25th. Ju is this going to be a big party like it's been in the past? Or I what wish. are you doing? So, of course, you know, originally a year ago, when we started planning for our 25th anniversary, we had great plans. We rented the Bridgehampton Tennis and Surf Club. We started, we, we lined up a roster of four incredible honorees, which I'll tell you about in a minute. You're our gala co-chair along with Jody Wasserman. We had such incredible plans. Then the pandemic happened and we had realized we quickly had to switch. So we're having a virtual gala on Saturday, July 25th at right. 6.30. We have it. We still have our four wonderful honorees. We have some very special people who will be like stopping by. We have Hillary Clinton, George Stephanopoulos, Stephanopoulos, nice. Toby and Isaac Perlman, among others. And and, and um, we have um, a little talent with Jessica Kearson, some comedy, Lucas, um, I'm playing, I just blank, can't believe I blanked, Lucas Hunt will be our MC. And, and so we have all these great people we want to celebrate, even though it's a difficult time to celebrate. So it's virtual. It will be a half hour of fun, entertainment, excitement, and I hope a little pull on the heartstring because even if breast cancer is serious, we don't have to be serious all the time. Well, we can celebrate, and we, we can, can celebrate the... Um, the, the um, movement forward with uh, breast cancer and, and the treatment of breast cancer Correct. and and then what you do. And I remember one year I was an honoree and I think it was at Chuck Scarborough's home. Chuck graciously opened up his um, a big yard um, and I was an honoree along with Robert Challoner, the president of Correct. Southampton Hospital. And you did a beautiful job and I'll never forget that. And um, you know, people say, well, why do you honor people? Well. Very often, people are honored for what they can bring to a charity and maybe bring new contacts, new people, new sources of funding, and then, of course, make a donation. But um, who are your honorees this year? I just want to say you honor people for all those reasons, but you also honor them because you think they're extraordinary and stellar as a human being, that you, well, can, that you can put your foundation's name behind someone. 
yeah, I feel very strongly that this foundation has my sister's name on it. It always has to be at the highest level because it, it's her name. And so yes. I feel very strongly when we choose an honoree that it is someone that we think is really stellar and deserving of recognition. Wonderful. And who are your so four our honorees this year? We have four honorees. We have, um, in no special order, Christina Cuomo in Purist Magazine. Nice. And I and think I love she's Christina. lovely. I, I, she's a wonderful, wonderful person. And I think her magazine is a great public service. You know, it is full All about health and, health and how to eat and right. And wellness and, and anxiety mm -hmm. reduction. Mm -hmm. And a little bit of the gossip that we love of the Hamptons. It has something for everyone. It is really well written. It's, it's easily accessible. You don't have to have your PhD to understand any of the articles, and they resonate and make sense. Yes, and for uh, our viewers, uh, Christine Cuomo is married to Chris Cuomo, um, CNN um, a newscaster, I guess, n nightly at 9 o'clock, right? I think so. <laughs> yeah. So and she, um, so she's your she's, first honoree, she's and then second? Is Kristen Dahlgren, who's an NBC correspondent. Nice. And a year ago, she um, was covering a hurricane, I guess it was a hurricane, and she was talking, previous to that, a few years earlier, she had interviewed a doctor, a breast doctor, who was talking about paying attention to your breast and changes in your breasts. And she happened to notice while she was away a change in her own breast. Remembering her story, she did not wait to come back to New York. She saw a doctor and was diagnosed with stage two breast cancer while mm. she was on assignment. Mm. And she's just finished her treatment. And she went public with her story to share it because she said, maybe if I share my story, it will help other women to pay attention. Absolutely, you know, when uh, different celebrities and, and then people you know share their stories. I think it makes it much easier for other women who come down with breast cancer because I think anyone who's had a diagnosis of cancer, um, it, it, it must be a terrible thing because you're frightened. And, but today I hear that you know, the cure rate on most cancers now is about 98%, 99% if you go through whatever is um, the the process of curing that, either chemo or radiation therapy, and you can be cured. So Julie, um, and then who's your third so honoree? So our third honoree is Patty Kenner, who is a wonderful philanthropist in her own right, involved yes. with a million organizations. She's... I know Patty. So Patty, Patty is also wonderful one of my woman. closest friends, and I'm, it's a, for me to honor Patty is just extraordinary. I met Patty, this is just a little digression, I met Patty in 1996 when I started Ellen's Run. I actually met her at a Museum of Jewish Heritage event, but it didn't quite resonate with me. And I was hanging up posters in Book Hampton. She walks in and goes, I know you. Well, it's so nice. So you're honoring her, another philanthropist. Exactly. Yes, and then the fourth honoree? So the fourth honoree is Elil O'Brien. In Elil, is the oncological social worker who facilitates all our support groups through Ellen as well. And in her own inimitable way is a total lifesaver. She, through her wisdom, through dispensing um, her support groups, which are geared towards women who are newly diagnosed, women with metastatic disease, ongoing wellness, she helps reduce the anxiety and stress that are concomitant with living with a life-threatening disease. So important. And what a great service. And um, Julie, for our viewers, what exactly does the Ellen Hermanson Foundation do? Who do you fund? And, and where is the money going to? Because so many of us, we, we get so many requests for philanthropic dollars. And one of the things we want to know is, well, where is the money going? And what's their overhead like? And what is overhead? That's the amount of money that a charity spends on employee salaries, on maybe rent, and then on, on just putting together their various different events. And generally, a charity, in order to be rated with a high rating, they shouldn't have overhead of higher than 20% of all the money coming in. So, Julie, where, so what do you, money, where is your money going? And tell us a little bit about your overhead and how so you try to keep expenses we try, down. Okay. I'll start with the money and where it goes and our, our yes. sponsorships. We have a very deep commitment to the East End community and we keep all the money we raise here, here in the Hamptons. Here in the Hamptons, with the exception of $5,000, which funds 
um, a symposium in Ellen's name every year in New York City, sponsored nice. by Judges and Lawyers Breast Cancer Alert. Well, that's a very important it's thing very to important. fund. She was the founding executive director of this organization, right. and we feel we're very committed to, to this organization because it meant so much to Ellen. And when Ellen started, Judith Kay was chief judge of New York, and she worked very closely with Judith Kay in the nice, special. Nice, nice. And so, so then what do you do that, with the money out here? money stays here. We have, as you know, we have a really close collaborative relationship with Southampton Hospital. And we have been working with the hospital for many years. In 2008, Bob Chaloner came to me and said, I have a proposition. You fund a new self-contained state-of-the-art breast center and we'll name it for your sister, Ellen. In December 2008. And so that happened, right? It happened, and it was a scary time. Remember, 2008, the financial world was collapsing. Yes. And we talked to Bob, told him our anxieties. We, it was terrific. And in 2009, the Ellen Hermanson Breast Center opened. We spend a great deal of our time working collaboratively with a hospital. I feel a proprietary relationship to this breast center. It has Ellen's name on it. Well, you should because you're the founder of this organization. Exactly. And if it wasn't for your work, Julie, there wouldn't be an Ellen Hermanson Center it, at uh, Stony Brook Southampton Hospital. Correct. And now there is a satellite in Hampton Bays, and there's a satellite in East Hampton. And what is important to me is women here on the East End deserve the same high level of care that someone would get at an academic medical center, say Sloan Kettering, Wild Cornell. In New York or another and major have, city. At this center, I just spoke to Kevin Unruh, who is the vice president for radiology at Stony Brook Southampton Hospital. And I said, so what do you perceive the needs to be for the breast center? He said, technologically and with the technology, he said, we have everything we need. He said, there is nothing new on the horizon that we don't have at this breast center. So at our small community hospital, we have the same equipment that you would find at yes. Sloan Kettering, yes. at Wild Cornell, Stony Brook. Yes. We have it, and women in this community have it, at a hospital where no one is turned away because she lacks insurance. Amazing. And so, I just want to finish, I know I'm interrupting, but that's, that's part of it. So, so whereas we're not a fundraising arm of the hospital at all, we feel that we have an incredible collaborative relationship. Very much so. And role so. to play to make sure that this breast center is always state of the art to meet the needs of the community. Yes, and uh, we are now on the show Successful Philanthropy. I'm Jean Shafroff, your host, and I'm interviewing uh, Julie Ratner, and Julie is the founder and president of the Ellen Hermanson Foundation. And Julie, every year, one of the things the Ellen Hermanson Foundation is so well known for is the Ellen's Run, which is a run. It's a run when thousands of people come out and in support of this charity, they do it, is it a two mile run or no, a it's three a, mile run? No, it's actually called a 5K, it's 3.1 miles. Okay, 3.1 miles. And, and we, this is our 25th year, so again, we had a great event planned, but, you know, that's okay. We pivoted. We're having a virtual run. So the virtual run means we're not having a, an official run in Southampton as we always do. It means you can sign up for the run, and the first 500 people who register will get a t-shirt and a complimentary bib. Um, and you choose the date you run. The run will be from August 16th to the 31st, and you can Instagram us or send in your time, and, and it will be like, um, so you'll, it will count, and um, you choose the date you want to run, the course you want to run, the time you want to run, all of that, and you do the run on your own. So and are you giving out prizes again for who's ever uh, won and, and has run the fastest? I wanted to do that, and the race timer said you really can't do that because there's no way to do it officially. You know, when, when you do a race, you have an official race timer and the course is officially measured You out. need somebody to really check it out and make yeah, sure and no one's way, uh, cheating, so to so speak. So to speak, exactly. <laughs> I didn't want to quite say that, but you know, the first year we did Ellen's Run, we measured the course ourselves. And um, people had the best time, you know, the best running times ever, you know, really fast. And then the person who became our race director came to me and said, you left off a tenth of a mile on the course. So we mismeasured it. So, you know, so it was just our, yeah. our mistake, but everyone was ecstatic till they realized. We, so that's what happens when you do it on your, you do it on your own and you 
don't always know what you're doing. Well, hopefully next year you'll be able to do a real Please run not, again. Right? Yes, yeah, exactly. so assuming that this pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic, um, either we find a vaccine or, or just disappears. So, and then going back to my question about the overhead of your charity, how do you keep your expenses down and so that people are comfortable in giving? And this doesn't have to be a long, answer but very we're very specific first of all we have no we don't rent any place i have an office in my apartment in the city an office in my house i have we have no full-time employees i have a part-time bookkeeper a part-time executive director half time and we kind of um do independent contracting for jobs as we need them so and we then you have a lot of volunteers a right huge volunteers Our, we mm -hmm. are a volunteer organization and the volunteers really are the backbone and I have seen the women and the men involved with this organization, and the enthusiasm is just incredibly amazing. And I attribute that to you, Julie Ratner, Thank because, you. Julie, you are a woman who does great things, and you are very much loved, and you're not intimidating to anybody. You're very kind. You're, you're just a beautiful human being, and uh, I don't want you to cry. But <laughs> no, but <laughs> it's overwhelmed. It's like, where's my but mother But it's the now? truth, and you really have a, a fan club of people who Thank love you. you Thank and you. you do so much for the women in this community who are afflicted with breast cancer and then their families. You try to support the families as well by giving guidance, correct? And well, we do that. We have through Ellen's Well, we, the way we support people. Our social worker is also available, so she does do family therapy. When someone is sick, she, um, it affects the whole family. It, no it doubt does. about it. You know, life is complicated for all of us, right? We have all kinds of stressors and jobs and anxiety and children and whatever happens. And then you throw on a diagnosis of cancer and it's just, it's, it's just overwhelming. And so, um, so in, in, in family systems can begin to break down. And our social worker is available not only to treat the woman with breast cancer, but to help with the whole family. She does group therapy. She's available for individual therapy. She does end of life counseling. And none of our, our um, services through Ellen's Well, are they're, are they're all free of charge. We don't charge for any of our services. Yes, I remember when um, I was pregnant with my first daughter, my mother had a, a diagnosis of breast cancer, but my mother never wanted to tell me. And so I didn't know she was battling with this new diagnosis. After my daughter was born, she then, a few days later, told me that she needed to go, I think, for a mastectomy. Yes, she needed a mastectomy and then treatment. And I remember, looking back now, I'm grateful that she didn't tell me, but I'm sorry that I wasn't there to support her during, during those days. Of course, right afterwards, when she had the um, mastectomy and then the treatment, I was there for of her. Course. and. But it's, it's a hard thing for families, and I think because I was pregnant, uh, my mother was afraid to uh, share this information with me because she didn't want to upset me. So there's no one way or wrong way to do anything for all the families out there, but that was my little personal um, um, experience with sure. my mother's breast cancer, and I'll never forget it. And honestly, I'm grateful to my mother for everything uh, she's been through, and then for helping me out during those difficult times. And Julie, we have a few minutes sure. left, um, three minutes. And Julie, tell me a little bit about how we can all get involved. And what if someone wants to volunteer? Can they volunteer with your organization? We will figure out how. We love volunteers. And there are a few opportunities, even during coronavirus, where we could use a little bit of help. I suggest going to ellenhermanson.org and on our website, there's a way to register for the party. Our gala is free of charge. To, it's, it's all on Zoom on Saturday, July 25th. It's a Zoom party, and registration is free. We're hoping that people will decide to support us with gifts when they hear about the giving opportunities. It is free to come. You know, sign up, get your glass of wine or Diet Coke or tea, whatever it is, and join us. It's going to be so much fun. I've but seen... Yes, uh, but I know you're still looking for donations because we I've actually want donations. I, I'm giving a donation. I've actually been fundraising for your Thank you. efforts, yes, you and have. Thank you. those donations are so important. Anytime you give to a charity, if you can afford to, and 
if you can afford a big donation, that's wonderful, and you should do that. But if you're someone who maybe doesn't have the funds right now, or maybe you're worried about your job and whether you'll have it moving forward, you can write a small check, and even a $5, $10, $20, $50, $100 check makes a big, big Huge. difference to these charities because collectively, together, they enable a charity to move forward and do their work. And now, Julie, I want to thank you very, very much for everything you do for the community. Thank you for being Julie Ratner and thank you for, having for me. all thank you. the wonderful things you do in the, in the way of breast cancer. And uh, you are a hero to many and thank you. a great role model, a great leader. And I want to thank all of our, our listeners and viewers for watching today and remember that any one of us can be a philanthropist when you volunteer your time and your knowledge and then your available resources you automatically become a philanthropist and remember just because you can't write a check right now or you may not be able to write um, or do a lot of work, you can still engage in the act of philanthropy and your work is needed and never let anyone tell you that you don't have anything to offer because all of us do and together we can make a massive difference in this world. Thank you and God bless you.